So you can see in the biography of Dasko Swami how he felt separation. He had eating, drinking, everything. So that's pretty unusual for the son and the to do that. But we see some biographies and the Siddha who did something like similar. So our uh, reason I was asking question, what is the difference? Well, because the thing is, the sadhana is still his category, he's a Tathasta Shakti Jiva. That's his, his category, his, his eternal Shakti category, Tathasta Shakti. And it's his siddhas are Sarup Shakti. Sarup Shakti means, means they're made of pure Vishuddha Sattva and they're made of pure spiritual energy. Krishna's internal focus, the Antaranga Shakti, Sarup Shakti. Lani Shakti Samet and Sandini. And it's attached to Shakti Jiva. It's very really minute drop of that. So so he has a minute, he or she sat in the Siddha has a minute drop of Swarva Shakti in the form of Bhakti Bhakti Baba frame. But it's like a drunk or an ocean. So even if you read the biographies of some Siddhas, Siddha saints that attain Bob and Frame and a feeling of separation. It's only a drought compared to the Siddhas. Uh, even the separation of Radharani is like an ocean compared to the Lake of Ishaka separation. So I can I can understand. There's always gradation, there's never never oneness there. The sun is is an usher light years apart. And suddenly it says, need this is light years apart. And so the same in the spiritual world? So uh, Sanasita will never feel 
Brasile the same feelings of Tulsi Mangeri or in the in the Cita de Art will be the same. Cita de Art is still answering a strictly mixed with Super Shakti. But the Cita de Art is still all Super Shakti. So Mahabhav there. Mahabhav Subhini Rarani and Mahabhav there, Rupa Mangeri and Leighton Sakti. Our, our body is made to touch the circle, that's the eternal position. But it gets mixed up, that's why the analogy is used with an iron. Iron put in fire. It's iron by constitution, but now it's surrounded by fire. It looks like fire, it acts like fire, but it's iron. So we look like super shakti, we act like super shakti, or it's just us the shakti. Can't change that. But that's nitya. So, we can be like Tosky Manjari, but not Tosky Manjari. That's re reserved for her. But he expanded from Rarang's body. We're expanded from Mahavishnu, from Paramatma. Jiva Shakti is expanded from Paramatma. Paramatma is from Mahavishnu. Can you get a chair for Madhuri? I have to get a blanket or a pillow for it also. Some pillows are theirs. Third question? <laughs> hey, you're on the spot. I have a lot of questions, but maybe not immediately. Yeah. Okay, you're, you're, whenever you feel comfortable, Relax, you can ask your question. Or next week or whatever. about their favorite verses for Bhagavad Gita. My favorite verse, I never really thought about it, to tell you the truth. But, uh, someone's asked me a question, what's my favorite verse from Bhagavad Gita? I like 1865. Because Rani's name is there. Let's look at that verse. 1850, 1865. Well, that's Frederica's closed the door, screen door. Okay, she's going to do it. Thank you. Eighteen sixty five. This verse is also repeated in ninth chapter thirty fourth verse. Manmana Baba Mad Bhakto Madhyaji Manamaskru Mama Yashasi Satyam Te Pratija Ne Priyosine. Priyaji is the name for our Rani. So Krishna is telling is someone always thinks of him and worships him and bows down to him. Then Krishna declares it, that this person is very dear to me. It's my Priya Jana, very dear person. So this verse means Radharani, because Radharani is the greatest Radna, Radna Sarvesha, Aradita. In 10th Canto Vavata, chapter 31, verse 28, I think it is. It says, it talks about Radharani. It says, Durnama Anuranya Radhito. The Gopis are saying, no one else, no other Gopi has worshipped Krishna like Radharani. So, 
She is a great sports for so who is always thinking of uh, Mama and Mama is always thinking of me. Well, I was always thinking of Krishna all the time. And she, Mad Bhakti, she the greatest story of Krishna. Mad Yaji means she worships Krishna. Like no one else can worship Krishna. And uh, Namaskar means she paid, she paid her basis only one time. When does Rarani pay a basis of Krishna? The detail leader. Trick question. Yeah, smart you are. When does Rarani pay a basis as Namaste prolongs, gets down, bounces on the ground? It's meals down on the ground. When does she do that to Krishna? And this is a You're always in the Sean Leos, you don't know. When she decorates me, the Krishna. What? When she decorates Krishna. Sorry, Ronnie. Come. Come, sir. We have a question that was answering. Maybe you, you two devotees can answer a question. We're discussing a verse from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, 61. Man manava mad bhakta madhyaji man namaskru mama yasya si satyate pratijane piyosime. And it talks about thinking of Krishna all the time, offering obeisances to Krishna. So I asked the question, I said, what did you do, do we see the example of Rarani offering obeisances to Krishna? He asked the Kali Lila, which Lila do we see Rarani offering obeisances at the feet of Krishna? Do you understand what I said? Yeah, yeah, which Lila did Rarani offer obeisances to Krishna? Yeah, my speech is not good, I had a stroke a few years ago. You are you are correct. So I don't know the answer. Oh my god. So my students here they should know a little better. Surya Kun. Surya Puja, Surya Ryan Puja. Krishna disguised himself as a Brahmin, Vishwa Sharma. <laughs> Krishna disguised as a Brahmin, Nakli Brahmin. <laughs> and he says, you have to accept me as a prophet, as a priest for this sacrifice. So to do that, you have to offer flowers to my feet and offer vases to my feet and circle that way me. So Rai looks at Lita. Looks at me, Shaka. And he said, What are you going to do? <laughs> because her mother in law, Jatil, is standing right there. So I said, Okay. Because <laughs> usually Krishna's already a basin around Ronnie's feet, begging her to give up her mind. Manini Rani. So this is an example of Namaskaru. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 I yeah, got there, yeah. So that's my favorite verse. Because <laughs> Rarani is there. Describe Rarani and Priya, Priya is Rarani's name. So, another question do we have? Hey, Marlika, Rani right, Shah. Hey, Kishori. Where's Gopal? Gopal. Gopal's with the cows. Okay, questions?
Do you have any questions? Another question. Okay. You have a question? Yeah, please. Hey, go ball, you're late. <laughs> this is a question, so you can. The question is this, the one that's living in the holy dome of Vrindavan, Radhika, Navadri, Navadri, Mandal, Jagannath Puri, what are the rules and regulations that one should follow? Guru Goswami explains that in Rupadesha Amrita, Pratishtan Anuragi Anukamani. You should live in Brajmanda in the association with Anuragi Vaishnava. Anuragi Vaishnava is a very advanced Vaishnava. You should follow his, foot, his or her footsteps and how they behave and how they teach, what their instructions are. So, Anuragi and and Barsana and Vrindavan, there are many very advanced devotees, so you should associate with them and learn from them how to behave. Generally, general that was repeated time and time again by Sri Nitya Purishta and Antanas Bhavati Maharaj was that if you want to live in Vrindavan, he would quote a verse, two verses from the 17th century. Right. <laughs> we remember not the Swami and mercy started falling. <laughs> so he would quote two verses from Vrindavan by Mamrita, the 17th Satyak, that say, that say, unless and until one can see and accept that all the Vrishwasis that should have landed by a root as spiritual bodies but will not realize their own sin of the day. He will repeat that he will say this, these two verses every cartoon during his lecture for like 40 years. To emphasize to the Bengali Yatris and other boys living in Vrindavan how they should respect the Get a little wet. Tell you, tell you, get some plastic. That's okay, it's going to have a bit more heat. So, the answer to the question I live in Monica. Stop. Injured day, stop. <laughs> Be nice. Go on, get this in. Put the other side of the pole. No, no, other side. Hard ass. Other side. Okay, okay, so yeah. Yeah, the phone over the phone. Try a few things. Excited. So living in Radhika and 
means to behave in such a way that Radharani is pleased with your behavior. It means to respect all the Kundavasi. The term happy and very strong. It's okay. Right. No. Oh, this is uh, this one. Right, right. Right, right. Right, so. Yeah, but true Hardyam, Guru Goswami explains, says, Kundavasi Hari Toshan. Kundavasi Toshan Hari Toshan. He says it wants to please the residents of Radhika, and Hari becomes very Toshan. Hari Toshan means Hari becomes very pleased. So that means that the people and some feedback. Turn the master down. Master switch. That means you can please hurry by pleasing all the residents of Radhika. If you're first to buy, you should go out and give it to a cow, also a dog, monkey, and give donations to Brahmins, and give donations to poor people, and act in a very charitable, loving, kind, and respectful way to all Rishwasi. Not only Rishwasi, born here, but Yatri is here. Western devotees is doing bhajan here. Indian devotees is doing bhajan. Any devotees living here, either even human beings or even non-human beings. Dogs, monkeys. They'll throw stones at the monkeys. They have to trade sometimes. They steal their glasses. They have to give them fruit to eat. <laughs> fruit to bananas. Basic motto of living in Radhika and Radhika is respect everyone, love everyone, serve everyone. And the keynote to make the spiritual advance is Pratitish Sanaragi Aramagamani to associate with the best ways in your Harikata for them. Because in that Harikata, you get the proper vibe and the proper mood and the proper shiksha and instruction for how to be able. It's called Vaishnav Sadhacharya. So Vaishnava Sadhachar is the Bhushana, Sada Bhushana, is the ornament of Vaishnava. If you don't know how to behave, you don't know anything. The behavior is the signpost of spiritual wisdom. The greater the wisdom, the more perfect the behavior. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Hey, if you live in Radhakund, he had to follow Prabhupada and the Saraswati. What did he say? He said, Rara Sunni, you can search all the Vedas, you can search all the Puranas, all the Ithiyasas, all the Upanishads, all Mahabharata, Ramayana. Search everywhere, all the Sanskrit slogans. They will not find two Akshar, two syllables, two syllables of Akshar. Two Akshar, you'll not find two better syllables than this, what are they? Radha. Radha, 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 Radha. So, always chant Radha, Radha. This is what's chanted over here. Radha, can we say Radha, Radha, Sarkar? What does that mean? Like the Lord is Sri Radha. The ruling party here, the ruling party, the ruling government, Sarkar means government. The ruling government is Rarani, Rarani Seva, Rarani's holy name. So, live in Radhakun, worship Radhakun, be the Radhakun, and hear Harikata from advanced Vaishnavas, and serve all the Kundalasis, and do your bhajan, and please your guru, and you'll get Christian brain. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Question. Uh, you know, is it appropriate to um, ask something just a little bit technical about Nitya Siddha and Sadhana Siddha? Yeah, that's where you want. Um, just, uh, I was just discussing with my son, I will often discuss what a Nitya Siddha is, trying to understand. Um, the characteristics would they be that he's from birth within a you know he's basically fully formed uh, in some kind of transcendental consciousness 
because we see, uh, I've seen some uh, people referred to as niche sitters, devotees, elevated devotees, obviously. But you see, they, they seem to perform material activities to a certain period in their lives. Uh, so then they get introduced to, to, to bhakti and they start chanting a, a holy name and seems to progress from there. So, but then I see other people, uh, from birth they seem to be completely attached to spiritual life, even in different, you know, kind of uh, sampradayas or uh, movements or whatever. So I'm just kind of wondering, if, is Anishasita, is it apparent from his birth that he's glowing in a way and, and very kind of elevated? Or Anishasita can, can seemingly perform material activities for many decades and then it's revealed that he's an Anishasita. Well, there's some different viewpoints and different parts of Gaudiya Vaishnavism on this topic. I was with uh, formal modern Gaudiya Vaishnava movements and some 11 years ago I went to the traditional line of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, way to Paribar, initiated by Babaji Pandit. So some of the conceptions and viewpoints are different topics are slightly different than the contemporary Gaudiya Vaishnava movements. First, let me say that. Mm -hmm. So, in the traditional viewpoint, based on Goswami teaching, they say that these decisions are eternal associates of Krishna or Garanga from the spiritual realm. And sadness to our jiva, jiva shakti, who becomes perfect by bhakti bhajan, guru kriva, vaishan kriva, krishna kriva, prambara kriva. So that's the distinction. Nitya siddha is a, made of sarva shakti and, and sadhana siddha is made of jiva shakti, mm -hmm. called tatastha shakti. But in functional, functionality and in spiritual world, they act the same, but they have different spiritual energy constituent. Mm -hmm. It never changes. That's why analogy is used an iron rod and fire. Iron rod is iron, but when it's immersed in fire, it's imbued with, it takes on the qualities of fire. It's red hot, it burns, it acts like fire, but by constitution, it's still iron. Fe, loa, iron. But it's surrounded by, immersed in fire energy, so it's spiritualized. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami used the term spiritualized. So it's a test of Shakti because the sinner is spiritualized in that sense. He goes to the spiritual world, he gets a spiritual body, which is made of Bhakti Shakti, which is Ladni Shakti, and Samvit Shakti, which is Saru Shakti. But he's imbued with that. He's not made of that, he's covered with that. It's like, it's a little hard to explain, but there's some slight variation. Because the basis, the Ava is Chatasa Shakti, and the Nithis is a Shrub Shakti, direct expansion, Kayavyo Rarani Kayavyo Krishna. Mm -hmm. So that never changes. So the traditional Parivars, the Way to Parivars, Nithinana Parivars, Ganana Parivars, all the Parivars, Shavanana Parivars, they quote the Ghost of Parivars, they say Nithis Siddhas are on the planet only when Avatar Krishna is here. Mm -hmm. So when 500 years ago when Garanga was here, the, those religious sinners that were there, Sri Damodar and Nauri Gupta and all that, the religious sinners. Many people in contemporary go to Vaishnava and say their guru, guru from 1800s, 1700s, 1600s is religious sinner. We don't buy it. So that we, uh, we can't say it's not true, but for our teachings, our Prabhupada, what we learn, we don't accept it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sajjan Ryan says the same thing. He's from God. Part of my guru is a big fan of Brahmin fan of from birth. Yeah, we stayed, we stayed at his ashram. I stayed at his ashram for about a, a month recently, attending his classes in the evening. He's a, he's a brilliant very, scholar. Very erudite. And, uh, very erudite and a real gentleman. Yeah, he's he's a good friend, yeah, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was very impressed with him. So. <laughs> That's a very impressive one. So, but also, there's not much difference when you get there 
And she said, you know, I have a tag. She said, I'm Nithya Siddha. I'm Sadhya Siddha. You're your Sarup. You're a Manjari Sarup. Or a coward for whatever your sin is. You're doing Seva with Radha Krishna. Krishna Bhagavan. There is no difference in Seva and exchange. Yeah, it's just about thinking about that whole issue. I was never satisfied with the, with, with the uh, answers I traditionally got. I always kind of thought there's something... I miss, I miss what you would like to with, with the answers I got through the years about that, about who, what a Nietzsche sitter is, I, never, I was never satisfied with those answers. I always suspected there was a kind of a higher realm uh, that they were kind of a, a part of rather than kind of uh, come to the material world and, and basically perform. Uh, you know, when you read the biographies, yeah. uh, sorry to cut you off, but when you read the biographies of of our Nidhya Siddhas, six Goswami, from day one they were into bhakti. Oh Although Raghunath Das got married, he ran away. And, you know, Vishnath was married for two nights or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he ran away. But we can't, it's some debate about whether Vishnath is Nidhya Siddha or not. Because he lived in 1650, 1700. There was no avatar here then. Mm -hmm. But the six Goswamis, they're all Nidhya Siddhas. Mm -hmm. What? There's debate because uh, Shastra say, well, uh, who was the avatar? Yes. Gronga was long gone, he missed Gronga. But he, he bathed in the. Uh, so when he bathed, took a bath. But Narutam does this. <laughs> you said, the question is asked, Narutam does this, you know. So there's, uh, by the rule of Shastra, there was no avatar alive when he bathed, when he, when he was born. Chaitanya had already disappeared. I mean, was Aprakat. Uh, uh, Aprakat Leela. But, you know, Lord Chaitanya went to West East Bengal and bathed in the Padma Ganga. It's called a branch of the Ganga called Padma. And he said in the future, a great human being will come, Narutam. He'll bathe here and get the frame. <laughs> so, He's an exception. <laughs> he very well maybe did just say Shafak Mandri. But no one no one's saying that. Yeah, but six go strong is all did you say that. First may these things because every main thing is that is then and the uh, uh, reality of the spiritual world, there's really not much serious in it, it's, uh, and sadness in it. I say I get, get there some <laughs> millennium in the future, thousand lifetime. I'll be side by side with Mandri and Tulsi Mandri. But I'm sad, I'll be sadness in the religious sin. You're not going to say, hey, get away. It's <laughs> not like that. <laughs> There's no discrimination there. <laughs> Not like here, black, white, is that, you know. You just see, I mean, you know, traditional Gaudi Vaishnavas find it hard pressed to believe contemporary Gaudi Vaishnavas and say certain people are Nidhi Siddha. We, we don't buy it. I don't mention any names because we don't tend, we tend to avoid that idea. We just try to talk principle and tantra. But in the biography, in the personal biography of one of the famous contemporary, what they call Nidhi Siddhas, person, person says, I was eating chick, I was eating goat and mutton and fish until I was 50 years old. We don't find anything in the biography rule goes strongly like that. So, uh, you know, it's not my position to measure, but that's the biography, autobiography of the person himself. And they admit, they say, well, I, they were Brahma, Brahma, some kind of quasi-Hindu group. They got converted to go to Vaishnava at the age of 56. So, but we have to respect everyone for what they represent, what their contribution is. He's, because he's small, because, like I always say, it doesn't matter how you start the race, it counts. It's how you end, the, how you finish the race. 
When the race starts, everybody runs. You may be last. Last off the blocks. Everybody's running. Oh, I'm not going to win. I'm not going to win. Well, I got to keep. You keep running, running. Everybody, this guy trips. This guy twists his ankle. This guy falls down. And you win the race. So it doesn't matter how you start, where you start, how you end up. So wherever your guru is, wherever your shy is, it's not so important. It's how you take up the process, how you receive the mercy, how you finish the race. It's on you. 99% of your success is your endeavor. Look at your shoulder, Christian. Two fingers too short. Too dongly. Well, one finger was anugra. One finger was endeavor. Chasta. Chasta anugra means mercy coming down for Krishna. And one finger was your endeavor, your work, your bhakti, your bhajan going up. So your show was going up, but Krishna wasn't coming down. But Krishna said, okay, I'll come down. And then the rope was tied. Rope was tied with a rope from her hair. She had a ponytail, with a rope from her hair. She put it around Krishna's tie. She had thousand meters and meters of ropes. Two football fields, three football fields, a rope. Couldn't tie up Krishna. But she was sweating and crying. Krishna, okay, okay. So we endeavor, we work, we do our bhajan, we do our seva, then Krishna mercy comes down. Now we say, okay, I do nothing. Krishna will do the rest. It doesn't work like that. You surrender to Krishna, he surrenders to you. He's, he's a dealer. There is no dealer is Krishna. <laughs> you have to show your hand. Here's my hand. Okay. Take it. So we have to show our hand to Krishna. Then I'll show his hand to us. You have more questions? You are, now you're warmed up, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm warmed up. It's just something, um, when I was uh, with uh, Sachin Rondas Babaji's um, ashram, or going to the lectures in the evening, he said something that I'd never heard before, and I kind of often think about it. He, he, he said that back in Galaga, or in the spiritual world, you're not necessarily with Krishna all the time. He said that there might be sections like our devotees further out and only see Krishna, say, on festivals or uh, big occasions uh, when Krishna's being paraded or something. Then he has his intimate associates. But then there's a whole kind of network out there of, of devotees that don't necessarily, they just, they're at home um, doing their puja to Krishna, but don't see, them, see him that often. That, that was something new to me. I thought if you go, if you ever make it back to the Loka, you're with Krishna all the time. <laughs> but he made it sound like, yes, yeah, some, if you're really intense, you'll be there with Krishna all the time. But there's other devotees that are less intense and are more satisfied to just be in the background and, you know, with their friends or whatever. <laughs> chilling. Yeah, and chilling, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do the, wake up in the morning, do the puja to Krishna and. and yeah, be satisfied yeah, he's quite right. Yeah. I've never heard that before. That's all. Yeah, he's quite right. But I don't know exactly how specific he was speaking. Can you understand my speech? Yes, yes, it's perfectly fine. It's, well, I have trouble speaking these days. So basically, there's, for, there's a, going to the spiritual world in Vaidhi Bhakti and Raghadeva Bhakti. If you go to the spiritual world by practicing Vaidhi Bhakti, you go to one spiritual world. You go to Vaidhi Bhakti, you were practicing Raghunuga Bhakti, you go to another spiritual realm. There's unlimited spiritual realms. They're called Parakashta. Parakashta means compartments, section. So that's, that's the beginning. If you read chapter, 10th canto, chapter 28 of the 10th canto, the commentaries there. And also on Bhakti Rasri to Sindhu, Guru Goswami, or Jiva Goswami Vishra, and Mukunda goes on these commentaries, which are in English here and there. You can find more detail about this explanation, which I'm basing and giving to you. So when you when you attain the spiritual realm, let's say 
my cousin is first around, so maybe he's not around to talk about my cousin. But I'm just going to talk about Goloka Vrindavan. So you can attain Radha Krishna by Vaidhi Sadhana and by Raghunuga Sadhana. By Vaidhi Sadhana, you can get, get the same form as Krishna, you can live on the same planet, you have the same opulence, and you can be near Krishna. So of the four types of spiritual liberation, Salokya, Sarubya, Samivya, Sharsti, only one of them, you're near Krishna, called Samivya. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, you can be in Goloka Vrindavan, Radha Krishna can be on the planet, you can have your house in the ground, and just not see them. Yeah. He's quite correct. Because yes, you, 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 you uh, hankered, your, your bhajan was done in Vaishan with an ambition to G B T G. Go back to God. Going back to God is a material desire mixed in your spiritual bhajan. So you can go to the spiritual world with a material desire for your own pleasure. But your pleasure is spiritual. It's it's but I mean material by individual desire, not desire to serve Krishna. So if you have a desire, I want to live in the spiritual world, but I want to chill out in the nice palace. I want a lot of opulent palace. That's why I see so many devotees like opulent puja. All silver puja over there, gold and all that. Because they like that, they're attracted to that. So they'll get Sharsti Mukti, which means opulence, and they'll get Salokya Mukti, and maybe, maybe they not, we won't get Srubya, because they want to be just some coward boy, or they want to be look like Krishna, and this can be a coward boy. So they live there, they'll see Krishna go by, but they won't be part of the intimate associates, because they didn't worship Sudhav, Shubhav, and Sridham, and Rag, and Ugabar. If you don't do Rag, if you do Rag, if you practice Rag Bhakti, you can be with Krishna. He's really with Krishna. Chobi's gone, 24 hours a day. So he's quite right. So, because Vishnu Chakravarti asked this question in a book called Rag Vartman Chandrika. It's in English by Banu Swami and a couple of different editions. The best commentary edition is by Anantha Swamiji. His comments are very good. It's basically a commentary on, on Raghunuga Bhakti and Bhakti Rasri Jasindu. He called it Rag, Rag Vartman Chandrika, the path of Raghunuga Bhakti, moonlight. Illumination of the path of Raghavaki by Vishnu. So in there he says, that's the question. Why do you worship Radha and Krishna by your practicing mighty bhakti? Where do you go when you die? Because Chaitanya Charmini says you practice mighty bhakti, you go to Aikanta. Well, Aikanta means Lakshmi Narayan or Sita Ram or Lakshmi Vishnu. So he asks the question. But they're not worshiping the Mishra Narayan. How do they go to my country? They're worshiping Radha Krishna. He says, and it's also confirmed in chapter 28 of the 10th canto of Bhagavatam commentary, and Bhakti Rasri is in there, by Rupa Goswami. He says, they go to Goloka Vrindavan, but they, they're, they, they see Radha Krishna like deities. They, Radha Krishna appear in, in the temple, alive. And it only goes there and offers Sarti like he does in the Morti form. But they're really there, such in and under form in the spiritual world. Then he goes home and goes to his house and doesn't see him again. So they have a very official Morti like relationship with the personality of God in Radharani in the spiritual world. There's no Kunjalila, no Jualila, no Holy Lila, no Rasya, no Bambiar, no picnic in the forest, no gambling, no, no, no wine drinking, none of those bad that's the kind of it's inaccessible to them because they're not following Brishrasi and Ragmar. They attain Prima, but their Prima is mixed with personal ambition. So they stay in a compartment reserved for sinners and Vaidhi Bhakti. Narada Muni is a city, he attains city by Vaidhi Bhakti. He got his spiritual body, like Kunta, not Galaga Vrindavan. First chapter, chapter 6. So everybody from ISKCON, because they, they talk bad about Raghunuga Bhakti and they talk against it mostly. Mm. Then they all go to, they all go to Goloka Vrindavan and be 
have, have maybe have 40 years around. I think the, the conception there is that Bidi will lead to Raganuga. No, never. That, that's, that was the kind of impression I got of what was kind of... Uh, yeah, that's the misconception that's propagated everywhere. But I've never seen it happening. There's always been this guy for 55 years practicing Bidi Bhakti. Yeah. Don't have a clue. Because in the Bhakti Rasmi Nasinda, wave number one, chapter two, verse 309, it says you can only get greed or interest to practice Raghunu Bhakti by mercy of Krishna mm -hmm. or a devotee. Not by Bhakti Son. Mm -hmm. It's only by mercy. Bhakti Son is not included there. He says, Bhagavan Karunya, Bhakti Karunya. By Karunya, mercy of devotee or Krishna. Otherwise, never. You're lucky. <laughs> oh, please let up. I mean, uh, now you're an intelligent person. You're asking good questions. I like it. <laughs> oh, my answers are satisfactory. Oh, extremely so. Yeah, clarifying. You know, basically, what I kind of suspected, you know, from what I've been <laughs> hearing and looking around, but I just wanted further clarification. No, the more, the more angles you hear, the better. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've spent many decades in certain environments, you know, practicing Vaidhi Bhakti. And, uh... I spent 38 years. 38 years? Yeah, I'm close to 40, you know, so, yeah, 40 years. I spent 38 years and quit. <laughs> yeah, so... Moved on. Everything is good. I don't, I don't have any criticism mm -hmm. of my past. It's all positive, positive and progressive. As long as you're going forward, it's good. Wherever we got his mercy, it was Krishna's mercy. So we should always be grateful and thankful. Mm -hmm. Krishna. Did you? Did you have, yeah, go for it. Radhiradha Maharaj Ji, in the commentary of Vilap Kusmanjali, uh, verse 30, it was mentioned, Sri Radhika has rings on her all fingers, except right thumb, index and middle finger. Is there any special ring arrangements on Sri Radhika? Depends on the occasion. Is there any special arrangement of the rings? No, I have seven rings. Yeah. Is there any special arrangement of the rings based on the occasion? Well, first of all, Ravani doesn't follow astrology. <laughs> <laughs> Ravani wears seven rings on her finger. Fingers. What? Which fing? Which hand? Which fingers? Well, the fingers. It's attentive. <laughs> okay, try to fake it out. Okay. How many on the left hand? On uh, the left hand, five. Correct. How are you right hand? On the, on the right hand, two. Where? Uh, this. This. This here. This two, yeah. So what's the question? Is there any... It's right there every day. Why is it like that? What's the question? Is there any special arrangement that is... On the special arrangement? What's this before? Based on the question. Based on the occasion, is there any occasion is loving Krishna. And that's 24 out of 7. <laughs> so rings are always on our fingers. The real question to ask is, why does Rarai leave these three fingers without... Uh, Play Divina. Uh, rings. To Play Divina. No, maybe. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> These three fingers are only has no rings on her fingers, no finger ring. Why? Because she wants to play with Krishna's hair. <laughs> she doesn't want to get it caught. <laughs> That's one reason. Another reason is for Dina. She's a musician. Calamity Radharan. Where are there any cooks 
nutritious breakfast with a move of the fingers or not? Huh? Fingers. <laughs> 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 what? When Radharani cooks Krishna's breakfast. Have you seen? Have you ever cooked? Uh, no. <laughs> when she cooks and bathes, she takes no water in. She doesn't leave it around so the Munchies steal them. <laughs> if she leaves it around, you'll steal them. She gives sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you see it as a gift, that's what you call stealing. <laughs> Oh no, I forgot to read. It's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the maids say when they steal the master's read. <laughs> okay, now I've got to watch out for you. Beware, there's a thief in the audience. <laughs> again? <laughs> All right, well, she forgot to read on the gift. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <Ronnie. laughs> <laughs> okay, question. I'll take you some water. Jai Jai Shri Rani Rajasi Gaudiya Vaishnavas, Sajati is Snigdha, they should be the same family with the same aspiration and the same stai rati that you want to attain. Okay. Not Rajasi, Tantra, Canary, Rajasi. So, uh, when people ask from Prabhupada, Prabhupada told that uh, that Rajasi is me. Huh? When once uh, a disciple asked Prabhupada that who is that Rajasi that we should follow, Prabhupada told that that Vrajvasi is me, that's uh, okay. Chiri, you know? So I want to ask that, uh, like Prabhupada being the Vrajvasi, what's the eternal position? Huh? What's the eternal position of uh, Srila Prabhupada? What is the eternal position of Srila Prabhupada? Krishna Das. <laughs> he said, what's the eternal position of Srila Prabhupada? Srila Prabhupada's father, Gormohan Day, he prayed every Saturday that came to his house for lunch. He said, please bless my son, Abhay Day. He becomes a pure devotee of Radharani. So Prabhupada is in the spiritual world serving Radharani as a dasi. In Sadhguru, he's Krishna Das. In Siru, he's Radha Dasi. So what else do you want to know? So follow Prabhupada, I become Radha Dasi. Will you just say my prophet? I want to, uh, Maharaj, I have not uh, like uh, asked any Maharaj for education because in my heart I have felt like uh, I want to like stay in the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. Okay. So, so that is. He arrange for you something, that's a good idea. Pray Prabhupada and Krishna and Prabhupada will arrange for your Sadhguru to manifest. Generally, Shastras tell that you have to surrender your head at the feet of a living guru. 
living room. You can read the third canto, I mean, Atul Chaitanya Charitri, chapter 6, I forget the verse. It's the Lord Chaitanya, it's talking about Diksha Kali. Look it up. It says, the time of Diksha, Matra Diksha, initiation, you have to surrender your head to feel the Guru. The Guru has to be alive to do that. This is not the Lord Chaitanya speaking. This is Chaitanya Chaudhary, not the chapter 4, verse 192. Antya 4, Chaitanya Chaudhary, 192. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking. Diksha Kali, Bhakta Kari, Abba Samarpan, Sekai, Krishna Tari, Kari, Abba Sam. At the time of Diksha, Diksha Kal, a Bhakti, a devotee, has to Abhisamarpa. We say, Mantan Dan Guru Samarpa. To Abhisamarpa means I surrender my body, my words, my life at the fear of Guru. That's the time of Diksha. Then he says, Say Kali, Krishna Tari, Krishna Abhisam. At that time, at the time of Diksha, when he surrendered the Guru, Krishna makes Yava equal to himself. In other words, he accepts Yava as spiritually. Now you're qualified and have the Adhikar and an eligibility qualification to render spiritual service to Krishna by addiction. So, some people will say, I'll take this change from Prabhupada. It doesn't work. It's not in Shastra. I forgot to record that one. Some other question? Uh, just um, since you're talking about uh, mentioned initiation, something I've kind of thought about a bit is you know the, the book by Narhari Sarkar, where he mentioned. It's not very much accepted across the board oh, yeah. by Gaudi Vaishnava. I know yeah. Krishna Vajnamrita. I, I know the book. Yeah, it's, it's just that I know at a certain period when I was in the temple that was distributed because it was pertinent to the situations going on at the time. Yeah, it's a bad translation also. Yeah, and um, it, it, the, the kind of uh, the message there was if your guru falls down, you wait for him. But I, I mean, I couldn't, I can't fathom the what idea. What did he say? I didn't hear it. If the guru falls down, you wait a certain period for him to become rectified. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could never grasp that because I couldn't imagine the the guru falling down in my in a sense I'm in a better position than, than the guru and I'm waiting for it right and I've kind of always you know from the start I kind of uh, you know didn't Do you go trying to discuss this point Bhakti Sandarva is also described in Mahabharat Mahabharat talks about what to do when the guru falls down basically it says you sh should move on should move on You can wait if you want, but if you feel the necessity, you move on and move on. And when you take diction from a new group, it automatically cancels the diction from the prior group. It's automatically canceled. It's not an offense. This is Bhakti Sundarma. 207. I don't say 207. It talks about this mm -hmm. practice. I wrote, I wrote an article, it's on, you can search on Google, Rejecting Guru. Okay. I wrote a two-part article. Yeah, yeah. You just type in, Reject Guru, and it all will come up. Okay. It's not my website, but it's faster to just search Google, Reject Guru. It's two parts. Mm -hmm. It's pretty popular. Okay. Yeah. All research is there. Many shots was The problem is many people are speaking that aren't really educated. That's the problem. Everybody's a self-proclaimed authority 
without quoting the Shastra, without understanding Shastra. To understand Shastra, you have to be trained by a guru, actually. Shantarayan is the best. He was trained by 25 years. 25 years, Shantarayan Daswaji was trained five hours a day by his guru. That's pretty significant. Sanskrit funded, he's a phenomenal person. I had uh, five years of personal training with my guru, five years. I learned a lot, imagine 25 years, mm -hmm. and being Sandy Ryan, very mm -hmm. smart guy. So studying with guru is very important. It's rare. Question. Any question? You're married? You both live here. Lucky. Lucky guy. <laughs> so lucky G. So lucky. What's going on, Madhuri? Your doctor told me you, you're sad. The question is, Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna, the Goloka Vrindavan, is busy with Nitya Lila, so he's not particularly aware of the suffering of the Jeevas. But Krishna has many, many different expressions. So one expression is Paramatma. Paramatma is in the heart of every Jiva, it's also Krishna. Paramahama is aware, and in fact, Paramahama is the one that makes you aware that now it's time to suffer. Now it's time to enjoy. All your karma fall is given by Paramahama. Good karma, bad karma is given to you by Paramahama. It's your karma. He knows what it is, he gives it to you. That's for general class of conditioned souls. This is about Jesus. So you're asking a question as a devotee, you're asking as a conditioned soul. The Siddhas are busy in Leela. When you're working in your job, are you aware of what's going on in New York City? No, you're in Paris working. So they're busy serving Krishna and Radharani and Kunja. They don't have anything to know about that. But they had different forms. And Chandaki Upanishad, which is quoted, quoted by Bhadi Vijibhusha and Govinda Basya, part four, and Chandaki Upanishad explains that sadness 
can expand themselves into 1,020 different forms. What form Rupa Goswami? Well, that's Sadhusir. These are Nidhisirs. So Rupa Goswami has many forms. One form of Nidhisir Rupa Goswami is Rupa Mantri. He's not aware. The other form is Rupa Goswami. He's in the material world. He's aware. He's writing books for conditions of soul. So the answer is yes and no. The Sadhu Rupa Nidhisirs are aware. And Siddha Rupa, they're not aware. They don't have to be aware, there's no need for them to be aware. They're absorbed in Leela, doing Seya, they're too busy. But they have many forms. The form of it is aware of the suffering and happiness of the conditioned souls, he gives it to them. But when one surrenders to Krishna, Paramahama moves out, and Krishna moves in the heart. So Krishna personally is aware of the suffering and happiness of a devotee. And Krishna arranges for the suffering, Krishna arranges for the joy and reduces the suffering. Your karma was you're supposed to get a big slap. Krishna gives a little tap. Something. Just to keep you humble and make you more anxious for Krishna. And you are eager to meet Krishna and be with Krishna. So you just enjoy all the time, you just stay here. So how are we doing? Krishna's making me happy all the time. Oh, no need to work hard, no need to chant, no need to try to go there. So I can just stop. Because there really is no karma. There's no karma for a Vaishnava. Or he is done by Krishna to bring us to him. And the mother scoffs the kid to make him go to school for his benefit, not just to slap him. So Krishna's going to He's a slap. Hey, get with it. Stop singing in class. Wake you up. It's a love, love tap, not a slap. It's a love tap. There's a difference between a love tap and a slap. Mother gives you a love tap, your father gives you a slap. That's how it was in my family. My mother goes like that with my mother hit back here with my father. Jai Jai Shri Rai. Atra, Sadyasini, Krishna Swami, Jai Jai Shri Radha, for a Jai Jagadha, it's coming for Jagadha Puri. For the East, this is the East. for it. It's like being on the beach and for it. <laughs> I've been here for 24 years. I was there 2000 when I was done. Question. Okay. Just sit there. You have it. You're exercising or doing yoga or what? Okay, go ahead. Who wants to reach Bhagavan? <laughs> she said, how many lifetimes 
Then they take to reach Bhagavad. Either Bhagavad Rajneesh or what are you talking about? Who is this Bhagavad? Bhagavad Narada Muni? How many light sides does it take to reach? 1,008. Is that okay? No? 108. There's a story about two yogis. I'll tell you a story of two yogis. They're both endeavoring for self-realization in Ardor. One was sitting under an Imli tree, one was sitting under an Ashwa tree. Ashwa tree has big leaves. People, people, people tree, Ashwa. Big leaves, thousand leaves. Emily, she has millions of little tiny leaves. Emily, tamarind, tamarind leaves, very millions of leaves. So when she had millions of leaves, when she had thousands of leaves, the Narmuni came to her. And he went to the yogi. He said, listen, I'm going to my cousin, I'm going to meet Narayan. So the yogi said, ask him when I'm getting liberated. The Narmuni went to This is Vida. No, this is Vida. Sorry, right there. He said, hey, Narayan, I'm with these two yogis. People, three yogi, and, uh, and Emily, three yogi. When are you getting liberated? He said, tell the two yogis that I'm a tree, people, tree, people, three yogi, but all of these fall off, you'll get that many births, they'll take you liberated. And tell the tell the tavern the Emily Tree Yogi. But all of these fall off, you're gonna read it. So normally came back to Harvard. Yeah, they all dressed like that, you know. Like you dress. <laughs> In Harvard. And he said, they all dress like something. Jata. And this so he said, Emily Yogi. You know, first he said Ashwa tree. That's thousand leaves. You will get liberated with all of the, uh, to show every leaf that falls, you take one birth, but all these fall down, so many births you get liberated. Why? That's thousands of births. Forget this yoga, forget this bhajan, forget this sun. He went, he went to hard work and gave up his cave and Rishi cage, gave up his meditation, started to enjoy. She went to Emily salt, Emily, Emily tree, millions of leaves. And he said, hey, Yogi Baba, you're going to liberate, you take one, one leaf of falls, you take one birth, then you liberate. He said, oh, great, not very long. That's my answer. Jesus Reed is as determined as the Emily, Emily, Emily Shri Yogi. But factually speaking, in this very life, you can liberate it if you want to. It's that easy. Sandarayan Babaji Das Babaji was asked the same question. He said, if you don't make offenses and you serve your Guru sincerely, in this life you can liberate. Three, three point program, what are they? Don't make offenses. Don't make offenses. Serve your Guru sincerely. Yeah. Two step program. <laughs> <laughs> Two step. Right? Sir? No. Please. Sincerely serve. Sincerely serve your girl. No offenses. No offenses. In this life you go. So you do it. It's on you. Every saint, every girl says the same thing. No one says it takes more than one birth. It may take more than one birth, but no one will say that. Because if they say that, that means they're offending bhakti. Bhakti has the power to liberate you from all karma. Abhrabdha karma, prabdha karma, kuta bija, sanchit karma, kriyamana karma, all karma, forms of karma are destroyed by bhakti by the way. It says in Brahma Samhita, verse number 54, Karmani nirhati kintu cha bhakti bhajan. By bhakti bhajan, all karma, all karmas are destroyed. There is no karma, there is no rebirth. Birth is because of karma. But bhakti bhajan destroys all karma. 
So do it. Unless you're out of fence. And sincere service guru. Don't become envious of guru. Don't think you're better than the guru. Don't leave your guru. Don't offend the guru. Guru is the key to rebirth and key to liberation. No guru, no key. Sarvapati Venir Mukta Tatra Sena Nirmala Rishi Kena Rishi Kena Sena Bhakti Siddha. There's a verse from Papa Pran called Bhakti Siddha Siddha. Sarvapati Venir Mukta. What should be free from all designations? And Sir Rishi Kena. Sir the Master of the Senses, and you'll get perfection. In Bhakti, in the eyes of Krishna, in the eyes of Bhakti, there's no higher love black or white, man or woman, Indian or Russian, Italian or American, Australian, African, and it doesn't have anything to do with Viking. Krishna's not Indian. Krishna's God. God is equal. So I'm sorry, but they should not be traced to the Apia. What verse is that? Nine twenty-nine. Nine chapter nine, Gita verse twenty-nine. Krishna says he equals everyone. So I'm sorry, but they should not be traced to the Apia. He's not doesn't discriminate. Samadhisti, equal vision. So why are you trying to make Krishna dualistic, Indian, Western? Krishna's not like that. That's the beauty of bhakti. There's no qualification. All you have to do is surrender and do bhakti. There's a verse from Pranas, what was, what was contender's qualification for bhakti? He was an elephant. What was Pranas' qualification for bhakti? He was a kid. What was Chaitanya's qualification for bhakti? He was a vulture. What was, what was, there's a verse like that. It's a very long verse. It's in the 11th count of hours on quotes. In other words, they didn't have any qualification for bhakti, but they got perfection. There are Chaitanya liberated coconut trees. What is the qualification of a coconut tree for bhakti? There is Chaitanya gave prey to a dog, to two dogs. She had on a saint's dog and a puppy dog. And Chaitanya Mungo, he liberated, he gave prey to a puppy dog, the dog tree. And Jagat Puri gave prey to Shivan on the Saint's dog, he gave it a there. This is Satan Sharjah. The dog got a sit there. So the dog got a sit there is a chance for you. It's right there it's in the big eyes is sit there. So there's hope for us. We're some kind of dogs, so. though. <laughs> yes. I'm saying that the great 
Question is about serving great Vaishnavas. The boys were able to do that. In Bhakti Sandarva, Arache 2.8.3, it talks about two types of seva to guru. Prasanga seva and Paricharya seva. Prasanga seva means serving the instructions, the teachings, the orders of the it's Vaishnav, that's the only guru, sadhu. That's called prasanga. A paricharya means to render personal service, to massage the guru, to cook for the guru, to clean the guru's ashram, to sell the guru's books, to give money in the guru's hand to run ashram, to personal service to the guru. There's two types. So any disciple can do, can easily do prasanga seva or paricharya seva. So we either do Prasanga Seva or Parashari Seva to get for Christ. Prasanga Seva means that you chat, he tells you chat 16 rounds, read the Bible every day, read Gita, meditate on your Siddha, meditate on Nitsa, Asaka, so you follow that, that's called Prasanga Seva. The Prasanga Seva will give you Siddha, it will give you perfection. Parashari Seva alone will give you perfection. Any form of say will give you perfection. I can explain the nectar of devotion, Bhaktivedanta with the sinner, Guru Goswami. He explains nine devotees got perfection by one type of service. Who attained perfection by hearing? Krishna Maharaj attained Krishna Prem just for hearing Bhagavatam. Who attained by chanting? Sukhaya Goswami. So you, you perform any form of devotional service. Either girl or you get perfection. Any more of that question? Question. My friend, you have a question? Mm -hmm. Is your son? Yes, my son. Wow. Yes, right. Son, yeah, we, um, we, came, we came about a year ago. Uh, we're living in Australia. Yeah. So I was at Pujari there until September last year. Oh. And he was a Brahmachari then and he's in the... Uh, Krishna Balaram is here doing the 24 hour kirtan for a few years now. He's going to be doing it for a few years. Oh, nice. Yeah, and uh, I'm just kind of uh, getting more into my uh, my chanting. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Great. That was my kind of uh, desire to come here and just absorb myself in as many rounds I can chant. That's good. Yeah. This is the place. And see where that kind of takes me. I'll show you everything. I'll take you everywhere. Yeah, well, I found at uh, Radakuna, I find it especially conducive to you if you don't hurry now. Yeah, it's very easy to chat and meditate. Very easy. I mean, back in the West, back, it's like, you know, it's like you're doing a, like a bit of a chore sometimes. It's a bit, here it's like, uh, 
Christ, nectarian. Amazing. Praise, mercy. Yes, it was. Stay here. Yeah, I want to be. <laughs> so everything come here. Yeah, everything's sold. I got rid of everything I had. I made a decision to, to come here because he wanted to do the care time. So uh, I basically, which I must be last year, was my 60th birthday. Oh. It was my final puja, did the midnight arty, and that was it. I gave all my possessions away, got one suitcase, and that's it. Everything is gone. We just <laughs> left it with me. Everything we had, you know, furniture, cars, washing, it's all gone. Nothing much. Christian took it away. Good for you. Hold on, nothing left. Very good. I wish you all success. Thank you. Your blessings. Nice. Christian will take care of you. Your sacrifice friend, he'll take care of you. Living in preserving means shredding toys of Christian. That's what I mean. Mm. As you stay here longer and longer, you realize that. I've been here for 37 years, not leaving. Mm -hmm. So, he's taking care of everything. Very courageous. They say in some astrologers say every 12 years of human life is like a yuga. 12 years old, 24, 30, 36, 48, 60. Yeah. 60 to 72 is a yuga. Yeah. So at 60 years old, you enter a new yuga yeah. of your life, a period of life. So for 60 to 72, you got to take off spiritually. Mm -hmm. It's um, because the Brea Spade, Jupiter takes exactly 12 years to go around the zodiac. Yeah, it's so related to that. to that. Yeah, it takes exactly 12 years. Yeah, you know about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, a, you're a astrologer. I've, I've dabbled, you know, just, just to understand myself and where I'm at, basically. Not to get involved in other people's lives, but I like to understand what's happening That's in my cool. life, what's happening now and what might happen in the future. Along with my sons, especially, to see what's best for him and how to approach things. I, I find it very valuable like that. Extremely uh, insightful. Very good. Yeah. It's a science. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I entered Mahadasha of Shani, Saturn, yeah, yeah. I said it's an ideal time to move to India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in 1987, I entered Mahadasha of Saturn, so I moved to India, and I got citizenship, everything happened yeah, like yeah, yeah. easy. Because yeah, yeah. Saturn favors that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I came over in my antidust, not the Mahadash. It's Jupiter Saturn for me that I came over. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now he's in the Saturn. Saturn? Yeah, Saturn. Yeah. Sanyasi. Yeah. <laughs> Good. He wants Babaji. <laughs> <laughs> precocious, precocious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Good luck. Here, Babaji. <laughs> Okay, question. Any more questions? Uh, you should be very careful while living in uh, Bethlehem, like doing any offenses. Should be careful anywhere. <laughs> so uh, what if like uh, uh, sometimes without knowingly we kill some animals like, and we just face our brain, like <laughs> we just put on that because like I feel that that's the Brajvasi that it's like thousand times multiplied and how should I uh, ask for forgiveness if I do that? Well, there's in the Shastra, it explains there's five forms of sin, pancha pap, and there's pancha yagya. There's five sins and five yagyas you're supposed to do to counteract those. One sin is crushing spices, cooking with fire, walking on the street, breathing, washing with water, 
all the Vietnamese were killed in this way. She had to do different yagis. She had to serve guests. She had to serve food to guests. She had to do Agni Hotra, all these things. But for Vaishnavas, we do Nam Yagya. So every day, you and your husband should do half hour Nam Sakratan. I pray to Nam to forgive you for all your, it's called imperceptible sinful activity. Imperceptible. You can't see that you're serving an ant or killing insects and spiders. Insects are inside the turmeric. You crush the turmeric and they die. Insects, you cook the fire, they fly the fire, they die. But it's all sin. So Shastras prescribe prior shit to atonement. But for Vaishnavas, we don't do prior shit, we do non bhajan So the ultimate yogi is non yogi. What's that verse? That was the count of. No, that's not the Yagi Yeah, yeah. 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 Yagi has to care to that for you, you chant the Houston and so on. What is it? Tell us to do Nam Yagi. So do Nam Yagi. You and your husband take a vow, take a sankalpa. Every day do half hour Nam Sakrasana. Kartal Murdamya. And pray that all your sins will be destroyed. Question. Yes. Can you tell about life in the sannyasa? How is the life should be? How it should be the Babaji? There's no such ashram as Babaji. It's just a turn that's become popular. Babaji means Vairagi. Vairagi, renunciate, sannyasi. Because in Hari Bhakti he lost, he says the Gaudi Vaishnava should not wear a white cloth. I mean, excuse me, should not wear a red cloth, they should wear a white cloth. He says, Shukla Vastra. Because Lord Chaitanya wore a red cloth, Sikh Goswami, all Gaudi Vaishnava renunciates wear a white cloth. This is proper. So, you should consider that the Gaudi Vaishnava will never wear orange or red cloth, they wear white cloth, if they're a Nazi. That's the first point. So whether you're Brahmachari, Vihasa, or Vairagi, Sannyasi, Babaji, whatever you want to call it, they all wear white cloth. This is a proper cloth to wear. That's for Gaudi Vaishnava. It's Ramanandi Sadhus and Bhadvacharya Sanyasis, they were orange or yellow, or, but for Gaudi Vaishnavas, it's only white, for men. You can, you're a woman, so you're just wearing orange dress or whatever. And so, that's the first rule for Gaudi Vaishnavas in general, for men, white cloth. Second thing is they follow the four regular principles that Srila Prabhupada talked about. There's four regular principles. Only man and woman can only get together and enjoy intimately if they're married and no intoxication and all that everyone knows the four regular principles. The same for Babaji, Sanyasi, Vairagi. And after that is they mostly engage in chanting, meditating, and studying. You want to know what, what a Vairagi does? Read the Sixth Goswami prayers by Srinivasacharya. Srinivasacharya, Sikhoswayasthikam, gives the perfect definition of Vairagi Gaudi Vaishnava. 
Shankya Purva Ganama Gana Tri Kalavasa Nikrito Vijra Hara Vihara Kali Vijra Chatyanta Didacho Kovi Baba Samri Tavdi Lahari Kalavada Magna Mahor Vande Ruva Sanatana Raguri Goshi Jiva Gopalaka Vairagi spent so much time saying a fixed number of job every day, study so much Shastra, read so many Astakams, has minimal sleeping, minimal eating, and always, always speaking Hare Kata and studying Hare Shastra. This is an example of six Shastra. So do that. Okay, right, Shang. Nidra Hara Vihara Kali. Nidra means sleep, but Hara means eating. Read it, are they conquered over eating and sleeping? Not easy to do. Daska Swami ate 50, mil, 50 ml. Yeah, buttermilk every day. That's it. So we can't be just going to try. It's not possible. You'll disappear. You look at all the sinner saints in Vrindavan, they'll eat properly. We don't hurry, Baba, Sundarayan, Naswamini, Pran Krishna Baba, Vaishnava Pada, Rajendra Dasi Maharaj, all the great Vaishnava Sadhus, living in Vrindavan, they'll eat three times, two times, three times a day. Rice, dogs, and body, milk, ghee. They're not eating buttermilk. They're the great citizens saints of Vrindavan. They lived a very balanced life, very proper life, not madmen. It's not by eating you realize Krishna. It's by mercy. They set the general direction we should go in. We should be as renounced as we can be individually not become them. We eat to live, we don't live to eat. Question? Oh, yeah, right. That's your question. So, um, yeah, I've been complaining a lot lately about this, you know, like renunciation of your muscle life. And obviously I'm not a renunciate. I doubt that I ever will be, but I'm also not a proper free house. You know, I'm like one of these Western people who just kind of drifts around like I don't have a family. I kind of, I'm just sort of, I don't know, doing, doing things. And I mean, do you think that there's like some necessity to be like clearly in one path or the other, or if it's possible to just sort of go in this way because I, I have no interest in family life but also I I can't like are you married or not no don't yes. waste your time to get married or to not get married what <laughs> like waste your time to get married now or the you're asking time you get well, I don't know what are you asking exactly um what do you, I mean what do you think is supportive for someone who's not not in a renunciate path to like go fully into Grihasa life? We don't, we don't, renunciation is not the goal. Praying and love is the goal. However you can attain love for Krishna, whatever situation in life suits you best, live that way. If you're living happily alone, make your money, pay your rent, get your food, just do bhajan. Don't worry about renouncing that. Just eat, sleep, do bhajan. Bhajan will do everything. Get a guru kriva and do bhajan. That's all you need. Get a proper guru and do bhajan. Don't even think about how it's just a waste of time. Time is very less. 
And we all have time to waste some ways. You're already crushed. You're almost 30. How old are you? 34. So you're old lady. Well, it's older than the hell. It's too late. It's, too late. <laughs> it's not too late to get married anytime. But you don't want to, so don't waste your time. Just stay with Krishna your guru. That's what I need. Dress up, you don't have to wear white, you don't have to wear saffron. You know, just dress nicely, be happy to do bhajan. Just be peaceful. Don't, don't ask me your Bible, all this stuff. Just hear it, chat, and remember Krishna and do bhajan. Associate with saving people, live it all the way down, and go to Krishna. Bhajan. There's hundreds of, hundreds of single ladies living with Madonna that'll never get married during Vajra. Vrindavan is a shelter for lonely hearts. Vrindavan is a shelter for lonely hearts. Only hearts also. Lonely and only. If you have too much mind, too much intelligence, you won't make it here. This is the heartland of Krishna, heartland of Radharani. This is, if you want to be a mental plane, go to Hardwar, go to Benares. If you want to be heartland, heartland of Radharani, with heart and love and prayer and bhava and bhakti, Vrindavan is the land of that. It's called Prem Dham Vrindavan. Prem Dham means Bhav Dham, means Bhakti Dham, means love place. Too much mind is not good, too little mind is not good. You have to have heart and mind together to be successful in Bhakti. Good intelligence and a good heart. Or good intelligence, no success. Or heart, no success. Mother required. That's right. Question. What is good heart? Question. What is good heart? What is good heart? Good heart. Good heart. Good is the quality of Vaishnava. There's 27 qualities of the Vaishnava, but it's called Saralata. Saralata means, good heart means, Saralata means straightforward. What you see is what you get. The outside is the same as the inside. There's not, a, there's not, one, not one face here or one face back here. There's one face, front, same face. It's pure hearted. There's no duplicity, no cheating, no front side one talk, back side another talk. Straightforward in dealing, in speaking, and acting. That's a good heart. Not too many people like that. Most people have agenda, personal agenda, ulterior motive, selfishness. They want to gain something. They want to hide something. They want to exploit something, take something. Very few good-hearted people in the world. So watch out. Caveat emptor. <laughs> May the buyer beware. We say it is Samadhan. There are many cheers out there. Ask yeah, somebody has one. <laughs> what, is, what is your question? <laughs> what is your question? <laughs> she said, What is a good heart? And I said, To be a devotee, you have to have a good heart and a good brain. So now she's raising it down. What's a good heart? So she's a very logical thinker. She has a good brain. So ask yourself, 
You have the answer. <laughs> the guy said it'd be a good way to have a good heart, a good brain. Oh, what's a good heart? So what's a good heart? Okay, what's a good brain? So I, I, I told the answer. I said, you have to find one. You have to find someone that's one. <laughs> Count me out. I, I'm operating from here. I'm trying to discover this. I'm searching for this. I'm trying to find a brain. <laughs> a good brain. The answer is, what is a good brain? A good brain is one who thinks he knows nothing. A good brain is a humble person who thinks, I don't know anything. I have to study day and night so I can learn something. Up to this point, I'm 25, I'm 35, I'm 40, I'm 60, I'm 75. I don't, I have learned nothing. I have learned nothing. I have to start learning now at the feet of my girl. It's called Upasana. Upasana. Upasana means a method of worship. Upa, upa means near, asa means sit. Sit near the source of wisdom. Sit at the feet of Guru. Guru Upasana, Krishna Upasana, Deva Upasana, Devi Upasana. So a good brain is an empty brain. If you kind of grow with a full brain, you're dumb. You're stupid. If you kind of grow with empty brain, so guru can fill the brain. With proper behavior, proper time, proper siddhanta, proper conclusion, proper behavior, everything has to come from guru. As you get rewired, rebooted, change the transmission, <laughs> change the change the put you into it. That's a good brain. What does Krishna say how to approach the girl in fourth chapter verse thirty four? What does he say? <laughs> Pranipate means you lie like a stick before the guru. Tayami Tapachai, I don't know anything. Sadhguru so Goswami, Dai the Vita Lord down and said, People say I'm smart. I don't know anything. Please teach me. Who am I? Tayami, who am I? This is a good brain. The Sadhguru Goswami is Paramvidvan, he is a Brahmin, very learned. He swears to his eyes, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Who am I? I don't know who I am. Let me start at the beginning. Who am I? All I know is I'm suffering. Guru Deva, I'm suffering. Please take me out of this suffering. Birth, death, old age, disease. Adi Abhi Klesh, Adi Bodhi Klesh, Adi Dabhi Klesh. I'm miserable and suffering. How do I get out? How do I escape? How do I get out? Okay. Then you do pranipate, then you do seva, then ask questions. This is good brain. Good brain is a humble brain. Oh, good day, how can I serve you? That's a good brain. When I joined in this Temple in 1975, I had a degree from college. They said, they said, what's your qualification? I told them. He said, okay, you're qualified. Here's your devotional service. I said, what's my devotional service? Clean the toilets. Clean the toilets every day. Toilets, bathroom, sink, everything. I said, this is Bhakti Yoga? <laughs> I came to learn Bhakti Yoga. You say you teach Bhakti Yoga here. Yeah, this is Bhakti Yoga. Okay. <laughs> Bhakti Yoga. <laughs> I think that's what we all did. Yeah, as soon as I, when I was a bathtub, clean the toilets every all day, mop this, clean kitchens, all day long. Oh, you got to clean the kitchen, you're more advanced. <laughs> <laughs> showers, everything. You know, like, I was stuck in the toilet. Yeah. I wasn't so advanced. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your lock tidy down the toilet, <laughs> get to the kitchen. <laughs> It works though. <laughs> okay. That's a good phrase. 
a good friend. Let me, uh, you want, let me, uh, hello, hello, my dear. I'll give you a test. I'd love to I'll give you a test to see a good brain. Come and clean the toilets in this ashram. Is your brain ready to accept that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Question. Christian, where are you from? Delhi or where? You. Yeah, me, you. <laughs> I'm from Rajasthan, Pushkar. Oh. Pushkar. I went to Pushkar. Brahmaji Mandi, I went there. Pushkar, you're Rajasthani? Yes. Hey, Rajput? No. Not Rajput. Agarwal. Not a girl, I'm saying. Chain. Banya. Mali, Mali. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. My ancestors were gardeners. Nice, I know Mali. This is the Mali neighborhood. Yeah. Definitely. This neighborhood is Mali. Yeah. They make pots and gardening and stuff like that. Yeah. I say Russia a beautiful place. I like Russia very much. I've been many times to drive for Ashmir, Galta, Pushkar. I like Russia very much. It's very nice people there. Beautiful lakes also. Who do I for? What do I like for also? Nice. Russia, you here like sister brother. You be Vrindavan, Rajasthan, like I sister brother. Yeah. Very close. Okay, the story question. What are the signs that Srimad Nirvana is accepting our prayers? What are you praying for? Learn about devotion and Yes, what? Yes, selfish. Selfish. Brother Ryan is a little busy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Ryan is not too much listening to prayers. We pray to Ryan for Nitya Seva. That's what she serving Krishna. We want to assist Ryan in her service to Krishna. All these considerations of Sadhguru, we pray to Guru and we pray to Krishna in our heart. Krishna hears and answers the prayers of the devotee. Because when you take things, Parvama moves out of the heart and Krishna moves into your heart. Like Hanuman. Hanuman had Parvama in his heart. But he was a of Ramachandra. So Parvama left the heart, Sita Ram entered his heart. He saw Sita Ram. So we pray to prayers for bhakti and devotion and intelligence and all this stuff. This is prayers to Krishna in the heart and to Guru. We pray to Guru Krishna. 
Rarani is sorry because we pray her for Nityaseva and Siru. Sagru, all purview and control of Sagru is this here and now is Krishna and Guru. May like the Guru because Guru is Krishna before us. Guru Day is engaging us in the service of Krishna. At Tama Diksha, Guru gets the Krishna Seva Vasana. It's called Krishna Seva Vasana. Vasana means the desire to serve Krishna goes to the heart of the Tama Diksha or by the mercy of Krishna. Brahmante Brahmante Kaun Bhagavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasari Pai Bhakti Nata means the seed of Bhakti comes from Krishna. Even before you meet Guru, you can start serving Krishna, even if you get the mercy of Krishna. But the formal, formal vasana, the desire to actually engage in service, begin a service begins when you take diction. Formal service. It's like apprenticeship. Because many people start serving Krishna before they get diction guru. Or chanting job or doing puja and everything. Because they got the mercy, they got the siya bhakti from Krishna, directly. And it's bhakti. It's also bhakti. But that bhakti won't lead to praying. That bhakti will lead the guru to get addiction. Mm -hmm. Bhakti bhajan without without guru will not give praying. But will give you the sukriti, not sukriti, bhakti is bhakti. Will give you the mercy to meet sadhus and get the faith in shastra and get the faith in guru and strength the guru to addiction. That's what bhakti without guru will give you. Bhakti is always bhakti. Although some contemporary modern charities call Bhakti without Guru, they call it uh, Sukriti or something like that. Bhakti or Mukhi Sukriti, there are some funny terms they make up that are in the Goswami writing. Bhakti is also always Bhakti. It's Karmishra Bhakti, Yamishra Bhakti, Chura Bhakti, Baba Bhakti, Prayam Bhakti, Samanya Bhakti, there's different types of Bhakti. But bhakti is always bhakti. Bhakti always is a result of Krishna or Guru. Bhakti is never Sukriti at any point. And Sukriti doesn't lead to bhakti. Sukriti may lead to Sarasanga. You may get Sarasanga. By Sarasanga and Krishna's mercy, you get bhakti. Question. Hi dear, you have a question? The girl in blue. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I'm very, very happy to hear that you carry your lights around Krishna. You'll be successful. I promise you. I promise you, you'll be successful. You're too smart to waste your life. Who matters? <laughs> I don't know. I waste my time on a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of like blah, 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 and blah. Do Bucky Brother. Life is going to get very weird in the next 10 years. Very, very bad. So you have to have good shelter around in Krishna. 2024 to 2035 will be the hardest time in history. I'm not an astrologer, but. I'm not an astrologer. Political astrology is not an astrologer. Do you agree with me? Yeah, I agree, definitely. You can see that happening now. Yeah. It's not getting better. Yeah, that's right, I observe, so... I... You can see it, yeah. You can see it coming. I've got a, um, a, a bit of a quandary uh, I kind of think about sometimes. I mean, Guru, a very important aspect of 
bumping or in most of them. What, what kind of um, I think about is people are very new to the concept of bhakti. They're just taking it up, just started churning, just started reading some, some grunts and scripture. And it's at that point that they make a decision about who, what path they're going to take. Right? Whereas at that point they're in an immature kind of stage most of the time. Most of the time. So it can lead to really erroneous results, misconceptions, bitterness down the track. So how do you reconcile that the fact that basically you're choosing a guru most of the time when you're very new to the whole process of bhakti, right? So, you know, when you're older and you've had some experience where well, you, you can identify things a lot better then, you've got more understanding, but too late, it's gone. So how do we kind of reconcile that, the fact that you're a very new bhakta and you're making this most important life decision? How, can, how does that work? Well, it's, the question is asked about how a new person coming to bhakti, the path of bhakti, how can one choose the proper guru? Because he doesn't know the qualities of the guru, he doesn't know what to look for. So he can get misled or get an improper guru and maybe swallow his chances for bhakti or get a bad taste or bad experience. Everything, everything depends on individual fortune. Obvious answer is act, uh, action performed with the greatest knowledge produces the greatest result. So when you're going to do something new, you should collect as much information as possible. For example, I read, wrote several articles on the net, how to choose guru, what are the qualifications of guru. So if someone's lucky enough to find those articles, uh, there are some, some ideas to look for, to cross-reference, what, what else should I look for in a guru? But if they're not, they don't see those articles, they don't know. So basically, sincerity leads to success. So as more sincere a seeker is, he will find, he or she will find success. They find uh, some of you times, uh, I met people at three or four gurus, mm -hmm. five gurus, and finally found the right one. So it, it's a matter of fortune. Because even she turned to try to read it, it's talking about how one begins bhakti. It says, Kon Bhagavan, Kon Bhagavan Jeev. Call means who, who, call means who is that for Bhagavan, who is that fortunate guy or girl that gets the girl? We don't know. It's like a Russian wheel of fortune, which da, 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 number stops. Sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you get a bad one. Like some people, they get a sit of a girl. Some people get a, a jerk for a girl. It's fortune, it's individual fortune. There's no real hard and fast answer to it. But the basic answer is person should be educated. Well educated. What are the qualifications of the girl? They're written very clearly in books. Now with Google we can search okay, qualifications of the girl. Well, who is the sud who is the sud girl? S A D. So who is the sud girl? What are the qualifications of the girl? They can find and they can check. Born a Brahmin family, no chance. Oh, well, this guy, this guy's not a Brahmin. Okay, check him. Out. You know, he's a high, because Hari Bhakti Das describes two types of girls. Except it's called the uh, It's called exceptional qualities and ordinary, ordinary girl and exceptional girl. So there's definition of exceptional girl and definition of ordinary girl. So you can look at the definition and go and look, look for. Look for an exceptional girl. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you buy, you go shopping, you buy brass and think it's called, they have raised in America, a fool and his money are soon parted. A fool and his money are soon parted. You have money. This is a gold play, man. 5,000 bucks. So I go, okay, thanks, man. You go, oh, I got gold, but it's brass, 100 rubies. She has to be educated. There's very clear qualities by this girl. The main quality of a girl is he knows Shastra. That's the main quality. He knows Shastra deeply. 
That's the main thing. Because they're proper from Bra, and in other qualities, he's been chosen by his guru to be guru. His guru has ordered him to be guru and give diksha. That's very important. Mm -hmm. As many gurus in modern movements have not been asked by the guru to be guru. Forget about Ridvik this, Ridvik that, all that stuff. You can ask, did, did your guru ask you, directly ask you to give diksha? What are they going to say? Mm -hmm. Probably have to say no. By some hocus pocus and raise mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So the guru or basically ask the disciple that's qualified to be a guru. I've heard someone uh, say that if the, if the guru is no longer... It's called Sadhu, it's in how you like to ask the term is there, called Sadhu Samatsu. Yeah. It means that the Sadhu orders you and all the, all the Sadhus in the area agree with that proposal. I, I, I've heard of a, a very senior uh, Vaishnava talk about the, the guru is no longer manifest physically. He can come in the dream. What, what's your opinion on that? It's possible. Possible. And instruct you to take the side. It's possible. This is Vedanta Sutra. It's called Brahma Sutra Vedanta Sutra. It's explained that sometimes things happen in dreams like that. It's possible. It's possible. But that's a, not a very strong Praman for being a guru. But you'd be easily prone to illusion. It's easy to cheat people. Basically, judge a, judge a thing by its result. Mm -hmm. What is the effect of that person's preaching? What is, what is his wisdom? I usually grew a motel in the society this year. But, you know, people get into not a dream, just inspiration. They forget about dream. What the society will be studying, be learned, feel inspired by far mouth and super soul. I want to be grown, I want to help people on this year. So, see what happens? Judge the thing by its result. It's a, it's a divine experience. I can tell from my own experience, I was appointed, a, I was in a spiritual mission. In 1987, I was made a guru by rubber staff, you know. I never initiated by for 15 years, 2002 initiated. That didn't work out. But I was asked for my guru, my Babaji Guru was initiated in 2015. He asked a couple hundred disciples, he asked two to give diction. Myself and one big Gali Brahmin, just a god brother, two. And I didn't initiate even after 2015, I waited seven years till my Guru went to the spiritual world before I started. Because I was waiting, he ordered me, but I didn't immediately start giving diction. I waited for some experience, some experience coming, some divine experience mm -hmm. happening. Until that happened, I didn't give a diction. Mm -hmm. So I had a divine experience where I felt the weighted chariot, my whole group from where I entered into me and empowered, empowered me. So I started giving diction two years ago. So it, I feel this is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. You get the order from your group and the bag of blessings of all sorrows from uh, Vaishnapada, the famous sadhu here, Vaishnapada gave you blessing and honor. And many sadhus gave you blessing. And so I waited for seven years as her orders and I waited seven years. So I wanted higher confirmation, higher sanction, to feel empowered to do, do the same. Mm -hmm. That's my personal. I feel this is right. Because now I, I feel it's real. But there's many ways to get there. I'm not, I'm not denying a dream can be real, can be true, can be powerful, or inspiration. You're asking a lot of nice questions. You're definitely experienced, uh, a senior, senior devotee. 
It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You have a great son also. Devani's son. It's the only thing I've done right in life. That was the, the best result of my Grigas the Rashram. It's just taking the process. How many kids do you have? Um, I so I've got a daughter as well back in Australia. She uh, she's at university studying archaeology, so <laughs> yeah. Right. They both had the same opportunities, but, you know, we we uh, he grew up on New Govardhan farm in Australia. Oh yeah, yeah very good. Went, went to the Gurukul there. And yeah, he's quite, I said to him when he when he was about fifteen, I said, if you take the full time devotional service, you don't have to do any more schooling after you turn sixteen. So he took that up and that was it. He started going to Mongolia at fifteen. It's been like full steam ahead since then. You're a lucky father. He's, at least he's not on drugs and you know the, what they do out on the streets in Australia, you know, drinking and the teenagers. Yeah. Very good success. Congratulations. Thank you. Be proud of yourself. Hard work. Hard work. This is five o'clock for ten. Two minutes. Two minutes. Any last questions? Two minutes left. You sure? Sorry, I question. You can ask in Hindi, you can translate. Indeed. He is for son. Oh, he can't go. Let's get for son. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. There's no for son.